Hello everyone, welcome to yet another Cave Divers React. My name is Gus. And I'm Woody. This week is a special week because we will be reacting to a video neither one of us have seen. Cool. So somebody who I trust sent me this video and said, please don't watch it, just react to it. And I figure we'll record it and if we disagree, we can not release it. <laughs> but, <Okay. laughs> but let's give it a shot because... The title of the video is Bananas. Like, I read the title and I'm like, I, we, got, we have to watch this. This sounds bananas. So, here's the premise based on the title of the video. This guy's a free diver. Okay? And he... All right, let me start by saying this. Let me start by saying this. This, is a video, this video is not about free diving per se. All right. Okay, because right away I was about to say, whatever Let's you do, <laughs> don't hyperventilate to try to eliminate we your learn, CO2 because we learn that, lesson. in fact, will cause you to have shallow water well, blackout. We don't know. So I don't know if that's what it's about. We don't know I if wanna... this guy's going to talk about hyperventilating or not. Like I said, I haven't seen it. But what, what I wanted to say is that a lot of people request that we talk about cave diving, like talk about how to do it. How do you run lines? How do you run teams? How do you do out of air exercises? How do you like do like basically like a YouTube course in underwater cave diving and A, we're not cave diving instructors. B, no, we don't want to teach people how to go in underwater caves ever if they're not certified. Yeah, go I get certified and then go in on the water cave. We'll go with you as cave divers, but we definitely don't want to tell people the top 10 tips to go safely in an underwater cave. That's I'm, that's a video they're never going to see here in Dive Talk. I'm glad you said that because I you would be solo because right. I think it would be irresponsible. Absolutely. Because we are not cave instructors, and in fact, we're kind of newbie cave divers. Yeah. So to think that we as cave divers will tell people to just grab their scuba gear and here are some tips that you can use to safely go into caves, like if you're gonna go into a cave, just do these things right here, would be bananas and so irresponsible. Well, this guy has shared 14 tips to go inside caves, free diving. <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm reserving judgment because it seems it seems ludicrous, but I don't know what I'm about to see. But Me neither. I don't think I'm not a free diver anymore. I don't think free diver instructors have a class to free dive inside of caves. I cannot imagine that that exists. Well, but I, I, I can't. don't know either. I, so I don't think so. We are all watching this for the first time. Okay. And we're all going to react for the first time. So here we go. Play. Hey everyone, here are my tips for free diving into caves. I hope you appreciate this advice because it can help you to explore these caves and also not to die. What? Now most people think free diving into caves is very dangerous and they're right if you don't know what you're doing. You may think to yourself, now, these spring caves aren't dangerous, the water is clear, the entrance isn't very deep. Yeah, I like Jenny Springs here, it's only 15 feet down. But there are some things that you need to know before going into caves. To start off, um, you need to slowly work your way into the cave. Uh, this means you need to test out how far you can go into the cave so you have enough time to get back out. Now, of course, you're in an overhead environment. You can't just pause. go straight up when you need to breathe. So I, you want to slow... It won't pause. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get a little bit of my thoughts together here. How about... How far... How far you should go into the cave what? when you're free diving? How about don't, don't. <laughs> How about zero? Don't go into the cave when you free dive. That's my tip number one. Tip number one. So I don't know Do what not. His, his tip number one is, but our, mine would be. But I don't know, free divers. Is it? Is it? Do you? Is there a class out there? Cave free diving. I just love how he started the video so nonchalant, like. Most people think free diving in caves is risky. <laughs> what? Listen, it is so dangerous. I, I worry about these types of videos because I just don't want people trying it. There's a lot of people that go to Ginny Springs. Yeah. Right? You see them swimming around. 
True. And they dip down and they look and that could, curiosity could cause them to venture into the oh cave. Oh, God. Man, for those of you who are watching, it's just that quick if you go into the cave with no light that you could end up drowning. I will say, though, and I don't know the rest of this video, of course. I will say, though, that we will risk being called like we don't know what we're doing. You guys are too soft. Free diving in caves is not a big deal. Just because you can't do it doesn't mean I can't do it. Why don't you mind your own business? That's we're gonna get comments like that. Bring it, call me. I happily, if I will take that criticism. Okay. Well, I'll lean to that side of things. All right. Well, let's keep. <laughs> go for it. I mind. work your way in. You want to test out how far you can go into the cave and still have enough time to make it back out. Oh. And so take your time. Uh, what you don't want to do is something like this. Let's say you've never gone this far back into the cave before. D Did you see where he was? Is that the great? No, I don't know where he is there. The, I, I know. Um, is that the one of the. Uh... That's the great at inside the ballroom at Ginny. Wow. Yeah, that's that's back. There that's ways, guys. far. Yep. But I think technically he may actually be in the cavern zone there. Well, yeah, this is a cavern. Because he keeps using the word cave, but he is in the cavern zone but there. But it's because still there's far. Oh, it's yeah, it's still yeah. far. Really far. And then you end up turning around, and then you see that you're very far from the surface. And you may even panic a little bit because you don't know if you can make it. I mean, you're way back into this cave, and you've never tested this out before. You don't know if you can you know, dive that far. So that's why you have to build up to this. You have to test these things out. And so as you dive into caves, um, build up the distance that you go in, you know, test it out. Make sure that you can make it back in time. Because going horizontally in a cave is quite different than going vertically straight down in the water. All right, next thing is learning the cave. You need to learn how to navigate into and out of the cave. What? Uh, these caves are like a labyrinth. You know, they can be confusing. You can get lost. I'm, I don't know. So I hear you over there, and we may not be in total agreement. I, what I'm saying is I don't know if this is something that free divers are doing or are taught to do or taught to build up to. I'm not quite ready to jump and say that there's not a, a portion of going into these cavern zones. That's what it looks like that they don't train for rather than an absolute no. I, I, mean, I, I don't know what I don't know. I see your point. I, I feel like if the video started with, you know, okay, you're a level three free diver and you can hold your breath for five minutes, you know, and you're thinking about doing cave diving or whatever, free cave diving or whatever it's called, let me share my tips with you. Then I would be like, okay, I get it. This this video is for experts. This video is for people who are like the best in the world type of top of the line, world class, you know, free divers that can go to the great at the Ginny Ballroom, that can go to the bottom of Blue Grotto and come back out, you know, stuff like that. Like those guys, I can see that maybe could benefit from this video, but it just seems like the video is for anyone. Like, hey, if you want to free dive, no problem. Just the first thing you should do is test it, you know, little by little. Like, it doesn't seem like this video is for experts. It feels like it's for anyone. You know what I'm saying? Lost. Um, so, for example, if you were to go into some kind of, like, little room, like that room right there, if you swim into that and then turn around, it may not be very obvious which way is out. And so a lot of these rocks, you know, look the same. And the funny thing is these rocks even look different going one way than they do going the other way. So that's why you need to take your time learning your way in and out of the cave. You know, there's little crevices, little openings, little rooms that you can go into, but wow. you could get lost. Like so that's why you slowly feet. work your way in and learn the cave. I don't have a problem with anything he said there. I, I actually don't. I think he actually said very good things if this is a thing. It is true. You got to learn the cave. It is true that when you turn around, the rocks are going to look very different. It is true that swimming horizontally when you can't go up and your breath holding is substantially different than when you're going up. Whether it's a thing 
is a question mark. Now right here, I'm so far in, there's no surface light. So I didn't have any point of reference on how to get back. Now here's actually a different cave. This is at uh, Devil's Eye in, uh, in Jenny Springs. And I'm very far back into this cave right now. It's about 60 feet down. When I turn around here, I just need to know by recognizing the rocks which way is out. Okay, he doesn't need to recognize the rocks. He can follow the line. But this guy is going through Devil's Ear and coming out of the eye. That's a long as free dive. I've never heard of anybody saying that I need to recognize the rocks. Yeah. I've never heard anybody ever teach us that. Again, as cave relatively new cave divers, we are told do not lose the line. That's right. And destroy. There is arrows that point out towards the exit. You're not going to recognize the rocks. No I don't chance. think. No chance. I mean, but man, going through the ear and come out of the eye in one hole in one breath. Well, yeah, that's, I've, there especially are, going in through the ear. I mean, there's a lot of flow. Flow is yeah. Wow. Yeah. Impressive. All right. For example, I have to swim up through this little crevice here mm. in order to get back to the surface. It's not obvious. There is no surface light. Look at and this. then there we go. There's the surface light. And now I know my way out. All right. This should Use be a obvious. Flashlight you or need two. a flashlight. But I have seen people go into caves without a flashlight and, and they're oh. just crazy. So please don't do that. Um, you probably want a wide angle flashlight, kind of like this one here. A wide angle light does light up the cave very well. And it's better than having some flashlight with just like a hot spot because it's going to just light up just a little spot on the wall. So a wide angle underwater flashlight is what you want. Now this For cave diving, you actually want the opposite uh, because in cave diving, we don't really use hand signals for a whole lot of things because we swim, we swim in single file. We use our light for signaling. So you actually want a narrow beam. He calls it a hot spot. It's, it's called a narrow beam. Um, so all of our cave lights are narrow beam. What he's talking about is he's recommending a wide beam, um, you know, for for free diving. And maybe he is right because you're not you're not doing signals or anything. You just want to see. So a wide beam will illuminate more, but if it's silty, you won't see anything either. The wide beam doesn't penetrate the silt as well as a narrow beam. Yeah, and of course we carry three. Yes, and they mentioned two, but that. Well, he he says carry a light. At least. Yeah. There's another kind of flashlight. Uh, I call it a searchlight. It's got a hot spot in the middle and this wide flood of light. And so it does light things up, but then you got this hot spot in the middle that you can look down tunnels, you can look in the back of the cave, and it works pretty well. Another thing you need to know is you need a backup flashlight if you're going very deep into the cave. If you're going to a point where you have no surface light, if your flashlight dies, you die. That's why you need a backup flashlight in case anything goes wrong. This is bananas. But it, it does sound like it's a course. I don't know if this guy made these things up or if he got this out of some kind of cave free diving course material. Hmm. All right. Another cool thing about caves is that you can pull on the rocks. Now, in terms of this free diving, this is great because it saves a lot of energy, saves a lot of oxygen. You know, where you can just pull on these rocks and pull yourself into the cave. We would not kick like that, but they're in a section that has a lot of flow. Yeah, I'm right. trying to give leadway here, so they're not going to silt it out in that particular section. We try our best not to hold rocks and not to kick our, like that if possible, but sometimes you have to, and they're not in a section that's going to silt. Since you stopped it, I will just say that where he's at right now, because I recognize it, I've been here multiple times, it's called the Genie Springs Ballroom. <clears throat> it's a great dive for open water divers because it's a cavern dive. It's not a cave. Um, so if you are, if you want to get kind of like a, a taste of what being in an overhead environment is like and you are with someone that knows what they're doing, um, this could be a really fun cave. This is the place where we go to do our cavern classes. It's a really good cavern. It's hard to silt it out because of the flow, plus the silt at the bottom. I don't know if you can see it on the video. It's like beach sand. 
It's there's multiple types of silt and we do get that question a lot in our videos. It's like how long does it take the silt to clear up? Depends on the type of silt. Some silt takes weeks for it to clear up once it gets stirred up. The silt inside the Ginny ballroom is like beach sand. Like you can pick it up, let go and it just falls to the bottom. It doesn't get stirred up like in other caves in Florida. So this is a really cool place to go. They do allow open water divers. There's actually a couple videos on YouTube of people like freaking out inside of the ballroom. Uh, they get really scared of an overhead environment. But I took my brother there who is recently certified as an open water diver and he loved it. He, he's like, I want to be a cave diver. I love this thing. Uh, so it's a really cool place to get a taste of it. I find it very helpful. Now, some caves are better than others for pulling on rocks. Uh, this is Devil's Eye Spring again, and there's lots of uh, rocks here that you can pull on, and, and a log right there too. Which is good, because there is a fairly strong current that you have to fight against, so That's pulling true. these rocks makes it even easier uh, to get into the cave. Or in other words, if I didn't pull on these rocks, I couldn't go as far. So I'm saving oxygen oh, far uh, by going. doing this. So keep that in mind crazy. Uh, as you go into these caves. Don't forget about pulling on the rocks. Another cool thing with the rocks is that if it's a vertical cave like this here, uh, you can rock climb your way out of the cave. You know, it's so cool. You could take off your fins and rock climb your way down and what? rock climb your way back up, you know, out of the cave. It's, it's a fun kind of way of exploring the cave. And destroy visibility. All right. There's also Which lots of silt in these caves. Silt's almost everywhere, and you got to be careful. Now, in oh. rooms kind of like this, where... You know, the water is very still. All these particles and dust are settled to the bottom. And they're waiting for somebody to swim by and stir mm -hmm. it all up. And so you don't want to swim into a tight space that has a lot of silt. You see, this is Devil's Den. It's notorious for silt. If I were to swim back into that and turn around, I, I wouldn't see my way out. It would look something like this. You know, I'd only have a couple feet of visibility. And I'd be wondering, how do I get out of this thing? And I'd probably be panicking. Yikes. So avoid the silt. Um, it's just bad stuff. All right, another thing to avoid is the current. Now, some springs have stronger currents than others. Um, now, Blue Hole Spring here, it's a deceptively strong current. Uh, you don't realize it until you're trying to swim against it. So what I do is that I found ways of bypassing the current. You know, I realize some areas are stronger than others, and so if I want to go into this cave here at about 55, 60 feet down, I go to the right, to avoid the current because I know uh, that it's easier this way. Plus, I can pull on these rocks, pull myself into the cave, and then I'm home free and I can you know, be free to explore and look around. By the way, I will say that the tip that he's talking about pulling yourself from rocks, we actually do that as cave divers too. So this is not just for free divers. As cave divers, you do that too. Um, there are some of these caves that have so much current that even if you kick hardcore, you don't move. You have to pull yourself into the cave. And most of the time that happens because of, you know, you're going through a, a part of the cave that is pretty small. So obviously all the flow concentrates on that. But then once you make it through that tight space, then it opens up and it's not as bad and you can swim. And so if you find yourself fighting against the current, there's probably a better way to do it. Like here's Silver Glen. This is so strong that I actually go in upside down, pull on the ceiling, and then flip myself around once I pass that entrance. Because there's a lot of water coming through a small opening right there. And then, you know, I'm free to look around. You know, it's not a problem once, once I get inside the room. Okay. Another thing are the swim-throughs. You want to thoroughly inspect a swim-through. That's where you swim in one opening and come out another. That's a good tip. You want tip. to make sure both openings lead to the surface. And you want to make sure that you can fit through them. You know, it's an extremely bad idea to swim down a tunnel and just assume that you can get out. Assume that it leads out to the surface. That's actually very so good. So here's an example at Alexander Springs. You know, you can see some light, um, but I had to test out this opening to my right to make sure I could fit through that. Because that actually is kind of tight. So make sure to inspect any swim throughs. You know, don't take, take any chances. Make sure you can fit. Look, the, this guy seems like a pretty experienced free diver. Yeah. And I would say whoever's doing this stuff needs to go through a class and be pretty experienced. I mean, I'm not finding any real fault with what he's saying if this is a thing. 
I mean, I, he's doing a really good job. Yeah, the only fault again, if if his intention was to educate very experienced free divers who are sort of like, man, all I'm doing is like Buford Springs, just going to the bottom and up, bottom and up over and over and over again. I want something new. And then you watch this video and you want to dabble into let's go to the Ginny ballroom and whatever, then yeah, this is a yeah. really good video. Yeah, but if this is encouraging anybody to go and give free is. diving, cave diving a shot, then that's a problem. I don't think he is. Yeah. Another dangerous thing are these narrow tunnels. Like this tunnel right here is pretty narrow. You can fit into it, but you can't turn around. So that basically means you get stuck because it's almost impossible to swim backwards with fins on. Mm. So if you have a narrow tunnel, um, you don't want to go down it unless you know you can turn around. Now here's Dogwood Spring. Free diving fins oh, are free very, very fins. long and yeah. floppy. So just give them a break there because For that sure. would be really difficult to back flutter kick. Right. This is kind of an exception where it is a small tunnel, but I tested it out and I could turn around. I know this looks really tight. This probably looks pretty claustrophobic, but I can turn around in this cave. And so that's the only reason I went into this thing. This. And so um, it's that's great good. to explore these places. I think it's really cool. Is it? And then as I went along here, I found a little room at about 25 feet down that had plenty of space. This room right here has like a sandy bottom. And so there's space to turn around. There's also space before then. Look at the cave point line. is, uh, be careful of these narrow tunnels. You want to make sure that you can turn around. Don't just go into something, you know, hoping for the best. All right. Another thing is you got to test out small openings. Mm. Now this passage right here keeps getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And eventually it gets all the way down to about a foot. Now, I tested this out several times before trying to fit through it. I just wanted to pause because I can't go that long without commenting. It just goes against my nature. <laughs> and the this pause past is weekend... that that's amazing. This guy can do this is amazing to me. <laughs> You're talking about somebody being able to free dive into that narrow of a restriction against flow. He's making you a believer. Well, think about how much energy it takes <laughs> when we're on your rebreather. Right. You know how you're breathing through your loop? You're like, ah, right? It's hard, man. And yeah. he's free diving, burning up oxygen. That's the fuel for your cells. Boy, these guys are really good. That's all I wanted to say. To be able uh, to do he's this. Making, he's converting you. They, I'm humbled. They're really <laughs> good. I'm I'm actually really enjoying this guy's video. I'm, really? My reaction is, Wow. Amazing, how how dude. how uh how big was that opening you spent three hours on this weekend caving gus when i tell you that <laughs> for an hour of it i was barely able to keep my head this way and not have to turn my head sideways for an hour in mud pulling <laughs> through the cave yeah it was brutally i tight. told you you I should know. never ever cave just underwater well we're, I'm gonna. Sh we're gonna do it. No. So no. Because this would and, be and I'm never gonna free dive in caves ever. No. We'll try it. Dangerous if I didn't. So I tested that out. I knew I could fit through it. So Just I did kidding. the dive. <laughs> now somebody bigger, like you know this guy here, probably couldn't fit through that. For sure. Another spot at Wakaiba Spring uh, is this right here, and I tested this wow. out several times before attempting to go <laughs> through it. Whoa. Testing it means I could fit my head through it, I could fit my shoulders through it, I could fit my chest through the opening. If my chest can go through it, then my whole body can go through it. And here's another opening here. I tested this out as well before flow. trying to go through it. This guy's like of course, Mike cool Young is, of free diving. Um, you know, this is how you explore the caves. You know, you can you know see these you know amazing things. You can see how tight this is. Mm. So don't do something like this without testing it out first. You want to make sure that Dude, you can he's fit. so tiny. So the worst that. thing is getting stuck underwater between two rocks. No. You think? Please don't breathe air pod I that's pockets. Bad. I know some of you out there have, and you're still alive, but that doesn't mean it's a good idea. Look at that. Remember we on the last video? No, I'm starting to believe. Don't breathe from those air pockets. Let's hear what he has to say. Let's not comment. Let's yeah, see yeah, what yeah, he yeah. says is, is his why on that and see if we got that right. All right, now this tunnel right here. Ah, oh, bummer. He doesn't uh, go through. Well, you don't know what it is. That's the bottom line, right? Okay. You don't know what 
mixture of O2 is right. up in that air pocket. Is like an exception to that rule. There is an air pocket at the top of oh, this tunnel because okay. it breaks the surface of the water. Oh. Uh, the good but, thing about this is actually this air pocket has a connection to the outside world. Uh, okay. So it does have oxygen. Okay. The go. dangerous thing about air pockets is you don't know how much oxygen is in the air pocket. You don't know how long you can dive on that yeah. air. It's we like an unknown right. variable in your dive. Wow. Okay. See, now I feel bad. Because I feel we started, pretty good, though, We that started we this that. whole video thinking this guy was a complete idiot. Which he's not. He's legit. He's really good. Wow. I, I don't know who you are if you happen to be watching this. Jumping to conclusions. Really, really well done video. Yeah. Still, if, though, if this, this is, is for thing. experienced people. Very experienced people. Yes. And if this is a thing, which it certainly seems like it is. Yes. This is awesome. Yes. So that's why I tell people to avoid air pockets. I don't breathe in myself. Um, this one being an exception, because I know this has a connection to the outside world. Nevertheless, it was kind of stale air, though. All right, you need short fins in small caves. Because like I said, you got to be able to turn around. Now, if you have long fins on, long freediving fins, it's going to be very hard to turn around in a cave like this. Now, a friend of mine actually got stuck in this exact cave using long fins. It was a very frightening experience. Fortunately, he, he got out all right, but you know, let that be a lesson you know, to everyone to wear short fins in small caves. You don't want to get stuck. Hmm. Uh, Blue Hole Sink is actually so small, um, I, do I dove this without any fins at all, which is you know, quite fun. It was, it was pretty interesting to do that. <clears throat> um, you also may need dive gloves. Um, some caves have jagged rocks, and you can tear up your hands pulling on these rocks and just trying to move around. Now, Alexander is particularly bad about it because it's a small cave with jagged rocks. So I always wear gloves when I go here. I also like wearing gloves when I go to Devil's Den. They tend to have jagged rocks there too. So keep that in mind, you might need some dive gloves. The next thing is um, our friends, the scuba divers. A lot of times I run into these guys in these caves. Don't shine your flashlight in their eyes. That'd be a bad thing. You know, give them some space. They'll give you some space. And they'll usually give you the right of way because they can see that you're holding your breath in case it's kind of a tight space. Unfortunately, they do have lots of bubbles and it kind of messes things up. But I just deal with it. It's all right. You know, I got to share the cave with these people. <laughs> this I can't people. just pick them out and say, hey, Yo. Go away. this is my cave. So let's be nice. Great. Right? Great comment. Yes. Logical, rational. Um, he's a free diver. He doesn't like bubbles, so he prefers the freedom we don't of like free bubbles diving, either. but rebreathers don't. But share the cave, give them respect, don't shine the light in them. Goodness, this may be one of the reaction videos I've had least criticism of of any of the others that we've ever done. He's really Man, good. This guy turned us around. He's very good. Last thing is uh, deciding where you go before you dive down. I made this mistake a lot when I was new to free diving where I didn't have any kind of plan. I would just go into the cave, I would just look around, and then swim back out. And I kept doing that over and over and over. And it started getting boring because I wouldn't see anything new. And so when I started making a plan saying, okay, I'm going to go to the left side of the cave, I'm going to go this far, I'm going to check this thing out. I kind of had you know, a game plan. I was seeing new things. I was you know, going further because I had a goal, I, had, I was like focused. Now this dive right here is an example where I'm just sitting yep. in one spot nice, looking around. I'm not really seeing anything I haven't seen before. So I'm saying have a game plan when you go into these caves. It'll make things much more interesting for you. These air pockets are pretty cool on the ceiling, I will say. Well, those are my tips on cave free diving. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask me in the comments and I'll respond. So okay, stay really. safe out there and don't forget to have fun. See ya. Well, well done. That's my reaction. Wow. I, I thought he did an excellent job. I mean, if you're going to, if you're an experienced free diver and you're going to free dive into caves, I would watch this guy's video. I will say, though, that when he started the video and said some people believe that free diving in caves is dangerous, I immediately thought this guy was going to be a clown. But he's right.
But I bet a lot of people think it's dangerous. He is totally down to earth, factual. You know, he's but, like, look, if you're gonna, if you're thinking about doing this, here are the tips that I've learned by doing this a bunch of times. I think it fits. And he was I think, legit. I think it fits our style of dive talk. I think yeah. he's humble. He's not being arrogant. Yeah. He's giving tips that are logical. He's telling you the why behind it. Um. I don't know. I don't know why we were asked to react to this. I don't know if people expected us to criticize it. But frankly, I would recommend this video for free divers that are thinking about getting into cave free diving. That's my summary reaction for me. I'd recommend people never get into cave free diving. I mean, that's okay. that's just me. I, I just I, feel I, like I don't know. I remember at the beginning said uh, I don't know. I, I just feel like if you have an issue and you're diving, you have air and you can figure it out. But I free diving, it's it's game over. I don't, I don't know if the free divers out there are going to agree with that comment. I'm sure huh. they're going to say, "Wait a second, we think we're a lot safer than you divers going way way back because we know our limits." We play, he talks about the planning, and I think that you're going to. Hear free divers say that why would you tell us never to free dive into caves? And I'm only going to say to them, I won't tell you that. I don't know. But if you if it's a thing, mm. this guy made some very good points about how to do it, I think. I will say that I'm totally jealous every time we go to Buford Spring and there's a bunch of free divers and all they're walking around with is like a Gatorade. Yeah, they have like no that. gear, and we're like dragging these carts with like tanks and rebreathers and all this stuff. And these guys are like walking by with like a cigarette, like "What's up?" They're watching you lay down like, on the table. Right? Think about your sidewinder. That- <laughs> exactly, I love it. Well, but like, how's that damn. to put on? Yeah, it's like as soon as I'm almost done prepping to do what, and like the times that we're like in the water getting ready to go, and then somebody is like a. It happened to you once, like your your uh, your reg- whatever your regulator was like free flowing a little bit, and it's like, oh no, you gotta get all the way out, <laughs> all the get... way out. These guys are sort of like, what are you guys doing? It's free dive, bro. Free, listen, free diving is absolutely amazingly enjoyable. I've told yeah. you that. I used to do it all the time, but you know now we're taking it to another level. These, these seem to me to be top notch free divers. V- Expert free divers. Yeah. These guys know what they're doing. Anyway, I think we're repeating ourselves, but yes. uh, uh, interesting video. Well done. Yeah. Yet another uh, recommendation. Here's the reaction for it. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video as well. And leave us your comments. What do you think about this guy? Do you also think he was nuts? And now you agree that the guy's legit. Or do you still think, do you still think he's nuts? Because he's a cave free diver. I don't know. I don't. Be, I don't think he's not. So it will be interesting to hear people's comments. Thank you, everybody. Uh, and give him some love if you if you like the video, right? We yes. we added the link to the description. Go and watch his video and uh, leave him a like or subscribe yes. to his channel as well. This guy's legit. He is. So anyway, we'll see you on the next one. Take care.